modern chemistry began in the 18th and 19th centuries just as Europe entered the trauma of the first industrial revolution. In Britain, farmers and weavers were driven off their tenant farms and had to find grim replacement work. A new breed of rich industrialists seized and fenced the common land and built metal foundries, steel furnaces, coal mines and steam-powered mills in the once quiet countryside. Hours were long, wages low and housing overcrowded. The air and rivers stank of pollution. People were lucky to live to 30. They died from acid fumes, dust, tuberculosis, cholera and typhoid fever. Chemistry at the time was mired in the Greek four-element theory of air, earth, fire and water. The modern industrialists were experimenting with chemicals for pottery glazes and new methods for making steel and steam engines. Working with them were a number of brilliant research chemists who were revisiting old beliefs in atoms. They developed a new element theory with around 92 natural types of atoms. I mention in passing two visionaries. English Quaker schoolteacher John Dalton published his famous work on atomic theory in 1805. It inspired the search for new elements. In his book, he published a list of existing elements and gave them some primitive alchemical symbols. His death in Manchester in 1844 was attended by a procession of 40,000 people. Swedish chemist Johns Bezalius discovered four new elements, silicon, selenium, thorium and cerium. He was the one who decided to give each element a one or two letter symbol the first letter being a capital. Manchester is now polluted with high unemployment. The second industrial revolution rages out of control in the countries to our north, with heavy smog killing millions each year in the overcrowded cities. French aristocrat Antoine Lavoisier was the first to attempt to define what an acid was. He was ably assisted by his wife Mary Ann, who translated the works of English chemists, assisted him in his laboratory, and published sketches and woodcuts of his equipment. English chemist Joseph Priestley, in 1774, had heated red mercuric oxide using a powerful magnifying glass. He produced mercury, plus a gas that he collected by bubbling through water into a container. Things burned very brightly in this gas, and mice could breathe in it. Lavoisier carried out many experiments where substances were burned in oxygen. He was meticulous in weighing the reactants and the products formed. When he burned sulphur, carbon, phosphorus and nitrogen in air, he found that the gases and smokes all formed acids with water. They gained weight when they burned, so they must have absorbed the oxygen. Lavoisier's acid theory of 1778 stated that acids were acidic because of the presence of oxygen. 
the theory held for 30 years. He chose a combination of two Greek words, oxus, meaning acid, and genes, meaning producer, in order to name oxygen in 1778. Oxygen was an acid producer. In 1783, he burned jets of hydrogen in oxygen in a bell jar over mercury, forming a layer of water. He named this gas hydrogen from the Greek hydro meaning water and genes meaning producer. We now know that hydrogen is the real cause of acidity. In a two-year eruption in 1783, the Lakey volcanic rift in Iceland spewed 14 cubic kilometres of lava from 135 fissures. Then it blasted gas and ash into the stratosphere and around the world, killing 6 million people by heat, then cold, then intense famine. The suffering in Britain and France was particularly horrible. Farmers and animals died within days and crops were poisoned by 8 megatons of hydrofluoric acid and 120 megatons of sulfurous acid. People starved and the French revolted in 1789. The rich Lavoisier was one of 50,000 people that was guillotined in the terror that followed. Sir Humphrey Davy was born in 1778 in the Cornish town of Penzance on the southwest tip of Britain. He was fortunate enough to receive a grammar school education and developed an interest in chemistry from a very young age. His first job was as a chemist attached to a doctor and he was given his own lab to experiment in. His friend said, This boy Humphrey is incorrigible. He will blow us all up. Building links with the Wedgwood Pottery and Watt steam engine families, Davy procured a number of research positions and proved himself to be one of the world's great chemists, eventually replacing the morbidly obese Sir Joseph Banks as president of the Royal Society in 1820. Davy was particularly famous for his public chemical shows, but his work was dangerous and ruined his health. He nearly died young after inhaling nitric oxide and considerable quantities of carbon monoxide deliberately. He also became addicted to the anaesthetic nitrous oxide, which is no laughing matter. His big discoveries came when he used powerful batteries to carry out electrolysis of molten metal hydroxides. He was able to produce the dangerously explosive alkali metals, sodium and potassium, as well as the alkaline earth metals, calcium, magnesium and barium. All were capable of burning dangerously and reacting and often exploding with water. His chemical shows were not good for the lungs. Electrolysis also produced non-metals. Chlorine, which he named and proved to be an element, as well as iodine. His big contribution to acid-base theory was his discovery that the acid made from salt, now known as hydrochloric acid, contained no oxygen. The Lavoisier theory was in error. In 1815, Davy published his own acid theory. Hydrogen 
not oxygen, was what gave acids their properties. The fact that there were acids such as hydrochloric acid and hydrogen sulphide gas that contained no oxygen was the proof. Davy died young in Geneva. It was up to others to build on his insight. Davy was succeeded by Michael Faraday. He made a careful study of electrolysis and invented the term iron in 1834. Ions are charged atomic particles. Swedish chemist Svante Ironius is accepted as the father of ionic chemistry as well as the author of our third acid theory. His theory of electrolytes was published in 1884 and ridiculed by his superiors. It won him the Nobel Prize in 1903. Electrolytes are those ionic chemicals which, when added to water, allow the solution to conduct electricity. Arrhenius stated that electrolytes break up into positive and negative ions when added to water. This models a sodium chloride salt crystal, one of many electrolytes found in our blood plasma and body cells. Water has the ability to break these crystals apart because its molecules have positive and negative ends. His theory of acids and bases were part of this theory. Ironious acids produce hydrogen ions H plus with water. To write the equation we take the acid species and rip an H plus off it. The first equation is done. Pause the video and try to complete the others. With strong acids such as hydrochloric, sulfuric and nitric, most of the acid molecules react. With weak acids such as carbonic and phosphoric, only a small proportion of molecules make hydrogen ions. Some acids such as sulfuric can lose more than one hydrogen. The second step is a weaker acid. Ironius bases produce hydroxide ions with water. With hydroxides we split up the ions. With other bases we react the base with water. Again pause and complete these equations. Weak bases are reluctant to form hydroxide ions, while strong bases react readily and are called caustic because they can burn you. Neutralization reactions involve the combination of hydrogen with hydroxide ions to form water. The other product is a salt.